Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Mark from Woodworker Source, and today I've got a really special treat. Mesquite lumber grows in the Sonoran Desert, my home. Cool stuff, right? It's kind of like an outlaw. It doesn't conform to the usual rules of lumber. It does its own thing. You want to learn about it? Let's check this out. So mesquite grows in the desert. What that means is that it takes root and lives a really hard life in hazardous conditions. Relentless heat, little water, and soil that's only slightly more sympathetic than concrete. The tree grows slowly, it's not very tall, it's twisted, it's branchy, it's filled with thorns. But you know what? The resulting lumber is really cool. So when you hear mesquite, you might be thinking of your buddies filling up your backyard and you guys are tipping back a cold one and you're grilling chicken thighs and sirloin skewers and all that over a bed of mesquite. And that wouldn't fault you for that. It's what it's used for a lot of time. But the lumber definitely has a place in decorative woodworking and in furniture making because the boards are loaded with so much cool character. The tree fractures, bends, and twists as it grows. So the wood has really unique green patterns, a lot of cracks, a lot of knots, and a lot of wormholes. And frankly, if you're not into that, uh, this is not the wood for you. So sort of like American cherry, the wood takes a little bit of time to develop its hallmark color. Freshly sanded or plain, the wood is kind of like a tan or a sandy blonde color. But with a little time, and definitely once it's finished, you're going to see the wood transition to more of a blazing sandstone color, the color of the desert. There's definitely no way to sugarcoat it. The wood is hard more so than hard maple. So you've got to have patience and you got to have sharp tools in order to work with it. But it carries a wonderful peppery aroma, the scent of mesquite. So our buddy Joe made this slab table out of mesquite, but he left me to finish it. So I did a really super simple finish that's hard to screw up, anyone can do it. And I thought you'd like to see how that goes. We just started off with filling the voids with black epoxy and then we gave it three coats of satin armor seal by General Finishes. Cool stuff, let's check it out. So I kick this off by mixing up some two-part epoxy and then adding a little bit of black tint to it. This brand of tint is called Mixall, but there are other brands out there and you can find them online or I'll, I'll go ahead and post a link in the description too. And then you just kind of pack this stuff into the voids as best you can using with whatever you can. In this case, I'm using a disposable knife and I just let it drip right off, kind of scrape it smooth. So if you've never used epoxy before, it starts drying right as soon as you mix it. So you got to start using that right away. Once it's good and dry, the tools to use are either a block plane or a card scraper to clean it up and get it nice and smooth with the surface. Then you make a judgment call on anything else that might need another reapplication or some touch-up work. Once you get that touch-up work done, you do that all over again. Let it dry, scrape it smooth, and see what needs to be touched up again. And sometimes you might need to do this two, three, four times to get it perfect. Okay, so dealing with the live edge is more art than it is science. A sanding sponge is awesome because it just follows all the undulations and it keeps your artistry in place. It's just a really nice tool to use for this job. Then to get this ready for a finish, we just move on to the faces, do some sanding, do some scraping to make this thing nice and smooth and as perfect as possible. Then you gotta clean off the dust, and so what I use is a tack cloth, and that sucks it up really nicely, and now we're ready for a finish. Okay, so here's the beauty of Armor Seal. It applies really easily just by wiping it on, you wipe it off, you let it dry, and then you come back and you do it all over again. The trick to getting a really smooth finish with this is to lay it down in overlapping stripes, and don't go back and forth. Just lay it down and move on. And then you take a nice clean dry rag, just gently drag it across the top of the finish to just smooth out the ridges and your overlap marks. And that's gonna give you a kick coating. So after this dries overnight, now it's time to do some scuffing to smooth this out even more, give you the best finish possible. The tool to use for scuffing can be anything from really fine grit sandpaper, could be steel wool, what I've chosen to use, a finishing pad. It's kind of like steel wool, except that it's synthetic. It does a really nice job, uh, I'll post a link in the description. And once again, just for good measure, you clean off the dust with a tack cloth. Then you apply the next coat, doing exactly the same thing. Let it dry, come back, give it a scuffing, and do another coat. It's probably not necessary to do any more than four or five coats, but hey, it's your project, your call. You just uh, apply coats until you're happy. And of course, once that's dry, you flip it over and you make sure you finish the bottom side too because it's important to keep the board balanced and sealed all the way around. You 
You let that sit for maybe a week and then you give it another good polishing with an ultra fine grit synthetic finishing pad. And then you can follow it up with some paste wax too if you want to do. And it really makes your project shine and look great. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. My name is Mark. I'm from Woodworker Source. We're your friendly hardwood lumber supplier. We do lumber straight to your door. So if you like the video, if you got something out of it, hit the subscribe, give it a thumbs up, all that business, and uh, come give us a visit. Thanks for watching. Really do appreciate it.